بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم نائلا گل ان ٹوڈیز لیکچر وی ول جنرلی انٹروڈیوسڈ ڈائجیشن وی ول اسٹڈی دی کراس سیکشن آف دی گٹ اینڈ دی ڈفرینٹ کمپوننٹس آف اورل کیویٹی دیٹ از لپس چیک ٹنگ ٹیتھ پیلٹ اینڈ سلائبری گلینڈ الانگ وتھ دیئر رول ان ڈائجیشن Starting with mammalian digestive system. Let's define digestion first. The word digestion is derived from a Latin word digestio. Digestio is a combination of two words. This, that means a path, and curere, that means to carry, manage, or conduct. So the process of breaking down larger food particles, that is macromolecules, mechanically and chemically into smaller simple molecules that can be absorbed into the cells or bloodstream is called digestion. The food that we intake is not in usable form, but at the end of digestion, it is converted into simple molecules. These simple molecules can be readily absorbed into the bloodstream and can be supplied to the cells to carry out their functions. Digestion occurs in elementary tract that provides the body with a continual supply of water, electrolytes and nutrients. Digesting and absorbing nutrients in mammal include ingestion, peristalsis, segmentation, secretion, digestion, absorption, defecation, and control. Ingestion refers to eating. After ingestion, food is transported along the digestive tract by peristalsis. Peristalsis are involuntary sequential muscular contractions. That is, these contractions occur in a sequence and can't be controlled by our will. Because of these contractions, ingested nutrients move along the digestive tract. Segmentation refers to localized contractions that result in mixing the contents in the digestive tract. In different components of elementary canal, various types of hormones, enzymes, specific ions and chemicals are secreted that participate in digestion. As a result, the food is digested and large nutrient particles are broken down into smaller ones. The digested food is absorbed from the small intestine into the bloodstream and lymphatic system so that these can be transported to the body cells. The undigested and unabsorbed material is eliminated in the form of fecal material. The process is called defecation. All these processes are controlled by local, nervous, and hormonal systems. This figure shows a typical cross-section of the gut. These basic layers are found throughout the gastrointestinal tract. The outermost layer is serosa. Serosa is followed by two muscular layers. The longitudinal muscle and the circular muscle. Muscle layers are followed by submucosa and the innermost layer is mucosa. Submucosa has the submucosal gland and mucosa has the mucosal gland. The gastrointestinal tract has a branching network of nerves called plexus. My enteric plexus is present between longitudinal and circular muscles while the mesenteric plexus is found in the submucosa. We will study about these plexus in detail in other lectures. This is another diagram showing the structural layers of gastrointestinal tract. As you can find the outermost layer serosa which is also called adventitia. Then the muscular layers 
consisting of longitudinal layer and the circular layer. Then we have submucosa and internally the gastrointestinal tract is lined by mucosa. The process of digestion begins in the oral cavity that is mouth. Oral cavity includes lips, teeth, gingiva that is gum, hard palate, soft palate, uvula, tongue and the floor of the mouth. Let's study these structures in detail. Lips. Pair of lips protects the oral cavity. It serves as an opening for food intake and retains food during chewing. Chewing is also called mastication. Externally, lips are lined by epithelium and that epithelium is so thin that blood vessels can be seen. That's why lips are pinkish in coloration. Epithelium also has abundance of sensory nerve endings. Lips are composed of muscles called orbicularis oris. Internally, lips are lined by mucosa. Cheeks. Cheeks are composed of bucking eater muscles and form lateral walls of the oral cavity. Tongue. Tongue is a muscular organ that manipulates food for mastication and helps in swallowing. Swallowing is also called deglutition. The anterior part of the tongue is free and is attached to the floor of the mouth by a fold called lingual frenulum. In the back, tongue is anchored into the hyoid bone. Tongue also has taste buds. Taste buds are small organs that are located on the tongue in all terrestrial vertebrates that function in the perception of taste. That is, they enable us to detect either the food is sweet, sour, salty or bitter. There are two sets of human teeth formed by ectoderm for chewing. Deciduous teeth, which are also called primary teeth or DT. These teeth are formed at the age of 6 months and start to fall out at the age of 6 years. They are total 20 in number. Permanent teeth are also called the secondary teeth or the PT. They are completely formed at the age of 13. They are total 32 in number. The teeth are arranged in mouth in two arches. Each arch contains two quadrants. As you can find upper right quadrant, upper left quadrant, lower right quadrant and the lower left quadrant. Each quadrant contains eight teeth. Palate. The roof of the mouth is called palate that separates the oral and nasal cavities. If you observe the roof of your mouth, that is, if you observe your palate with your tongue, you can feel that the interior part is hard. This interior bony portion of the palate is called hard palate. It provides space for the tongue to move freely. It also acts as the roof of the mouth and a floor for the nasal cavity. That is why Pressure within the mouth don't close off the nasal passage. The posterior part is muscular, that is why it is called soft palate. During swallowing, soft palate is raised that completely blocks the nasal cavity and food moves into the pharynx. The posterior soft palate ends up in a fleshy elongated outroot called uvula. During swallowing, both soft palate and uvula prevents entry of food into the nasal cavity. Salivary gland Salivary gland secretes a watery secretion called saliva. Almost 800 to 1500 ml of saliva is secreted per day by salivary gland with an average value of 1000 ml that is 1 liter. Saliva contains two major types of protein secretion, the serous secretion and mucus secretion. Serous secretion contains thylene, which is also known as alpha amylase and is involved in carbohydrate digestion. 
mucus secretion contains mucin to lubricate food and also protects the oral surface. There are three major pairs of salivary glands. The parotid glands, submandibular glands and the sublingual glands. The parotid glands are located on each side of the face. Submandibular glands open at each side of the frenulum and sublingual glands are found beneath the tongue. Parotid glands secrete entirely serous secretion while submandibular and sublingual glands secrete both serous and mucus secretion. As a result of mastication and saliva secretion, food is converted into a moist mass called bolus. Saliva contains bicarbonate ions which buffer chemicals in the mouth. Under basal condition, 0.5 ml of saliva is secreted per minute that plays an important role in maintaining oral hygiene. Basal condition refers to a condition in which a person is awake but at resting state. Saliva also contains thiocyanide ions and lysozymes which kill microorganisms. Lysozymes readily hydrolyzes peptidoglycan in bacterial cell wall. It also contains enzyme amylase necessary for carbohydrate digestion and it has a pH between 6 to 7 which serves as a favorable medium for the digestive action of xylene. Let's recapitulate the components of oral cavity. Oral cavity consists of lips, cheeks, tongue, teeth, palate and salivary glands. Lips protect the oral cavity and serve as an opening for food intake. It also retains food during mastication. Cheeks serve as the lateral walls of the oral cavity. Tongue manipulate food for mastication, helps in swallowing and have taste buds for perception of taste. Teeth are involved in chewing. Palate separates the oral and nasal cavity, provides space for the tongue to move freely, supplies a rigid floor to the nasal cavity and prevents the food from entering the nasal cavity. Salivary glands secrete saliva that moistens the food, contains bicarbonate ions that buffer chemicals in the mouth, maintains oral hygiene, contains amylase for carbohydrate digestion and has a pH between 6 to 7 that serves as a favorable medium for digestive action of thylene that is amylase. Thanks for watching my video.